Hi crafty friends, welcome to today's video. It's all about violet today and this is a card that I made this morning using some violet distress oxides and I thought I would show you how I made it and throw in a few alterations along the way. The first thing I did was smush some ink, some violet purpley inks onto a piece of smooth white cardstock. This isn't mixed media paper, it's just regular smooth white cardstock and it takes this amount of liquid fine. So the first colour is shaded lilac and I'm just smushing that over the whole thing leaving some white gaps. If you want to know how to make a smusher there is a video linked above and in the video description. I'm not going to dry that because I want the next layer of colour to mix and mingle a bit and this is wilted violet and on the card that I showed you at the beginning I didn't put much of this on it's quite a strong colour uh, and can be a bit overwhelming but I thought for this card I would do a stronger colour give it a bit more of the wilted violet so this is a bit that was left over from the card that I made this morning and you can see it's a bit paler compared to this now I'm going to give it a really good dry with my hair dryer the next step is to spatter on a bit of this violet metallic colour from my Prima Metallic Accents palette. And I dried it before I did this because I don't want the metallic to mix and mingle with the Distress Oxide. I want to get some nicely defined circles of splatter there. And I'm going to dry it again. For this morning's card I didn't add any metallic splatters so that's just another adjustment you can do have splatters or not have splatters whatever you fancy. The next step is to run this die through my die cutting machine with some smooth white cardstock so I'm going to get a white die cut it's quite an intricate die so I'm going to use my electronic die cutting machine with the metal plate to get a really clean cut. So here's the die cut. I did manage to tear it a little bit as I pulled it out of the die, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to glue this down. But I'm going to use a sponge dauber to pick up some tacky glue. It's just PVA and stick it all over the back of this die cut. And that is a really quick and easy way of adding the right amount of glue to a large intricate die cut. I'm holding it still so that it doesn't shift around and smear itself in the glue that's going on the glass mat. Right, that should be well glued. I'm just gonna pop that on there like that. Grab some deli paper and flatten it down this I'm just going to pop in a little glass of water so that it doesn't dry out and I'll be able to rinse this out and use it again later so now I'm going to cut some circles out of this and I want to pick some nice bits for each size circle so it looks elegant and intricate and interesting these are the circles that I used on this morning's card. I'm going to do a bigger one in case I decide to use it and a smaller one as well. To keep those in place, I'm just going to pop some sticky notes on and then run that through my cuttle bag, I think. Might need to add an extra shim so that these can cut through two layers of cardstock. So now we've got five circles. On this card I created a long thin banner to put my circles on so I'm going to do the same thing. I haven't got a long thin banner die that's long enough for what I want so I'm going to make my own. I've cut two of these banners from smooth white cardstock and I'm going to mash them together to get the length of banner that I want. But before I cut them I'm going to emboss a pattern on them. 
and I want the pattern when I mash these together I want it to look as if it's continuous so I'm gonna pop that here on a certain part of the pattern and then I'm gonna put that there so it matches so the same part of the pattern is running down the middle of both all right now we've got our pattern i can peel the post-it note it's such a thin bit of paper it doesn't make any difference to the embossing now i've got a smooth white card blank this is four and a half by eight and a quarter and now i'm gonna pop this on this one i put it off to one side but i'm not sure the card is really wide enough to handle that so i'm thinking this one's going to go in the middle so i'm going to snip off the bottom of this about there and pop some tape runner on the back and use my t-square ruler to get this roughly in the middle the right way up might help and then this one is going to go about there and I'm going to chop that and add some tape runner to the back and line that up So that's right and now I'm going to add my circles this one is going to go over the join so you'd never know and I'm going to pop it up on a bit of foam instead of having the circles running centrally down the banner in a column I'm gonna higgledy piggledy them a bit have them off to one side this one is going to be main circle like it was on here and I popped it up on craft foam to give it prominence then I think something like that just bring them together we'll have these flat that can tuck behind there like that and that can tuck behind there like that a bit of something on there but cover that up later and that one can go off there like that be a little bit separate I might cut another small one just so we've got five on there where did I put it there it is and I'm going to tuck that one just a tiny bit underneath there so this one I've tucked a little bit under there and moved it over to the right compared to this one because I don't want it in a straight line the, your brain makes links between things that are in straight lines and unless you actually specifically want that link it's a good idea to avoid it I think for my sentiment on my earlier card I cut the word thanks from gold glitter cardstock and stuck it on its shadow which I cut from vellum so that's basically that so I could do the same thing here but I did have some purpley glitter cardstock and I stuck that on vellum. I'm not sure if that's going to stand out enough. I'm wondering if I could use it, but maybe I'd need to cut the shadow from white cardstock. So there we've got the shadow cut in white. I think that just helps it stand out a little bit more. I think I'll keep it on the vellum because... Um, it just gives it a little bit of a frosted appearance, makes it slightly different to the white cardstock on the circles. So I think we'll add that. 
We'll pop that through my Xyron sticker maker so that I can cover the whole of the back of that vellum with adhesive. And because I've only really got one shot at getting this down, I'm going to line it up perfectly at this end. And that should mean it's lined up properly there. Although I have just realised that I've ripped that bit there. It's still, is it, yes, it's still stuck on there. So I might be able to, might be able to add that. And then I can put glue on the back of that. No problem. And pop that on there. Slightly off centre again. That one, everything is center aligned this one i'm doing higgledy piggledy now on this one i used this small cover plate die to cut out some wonky circles that i added here there and about to create a bit of energy and flow i've got some of that i can use but i might use the purple and add some of those first and then i might bring in the gold just for something a bit different this is a very old bit of glitter cardstock, no idea where it came from, but it's got a bit of an ombre going on. It goes from sort of indigo through to violet. So I think I will cut like that and then I'll get a selection of colours. I'll poke a few of these out from across the colours and all I really need is a little mountain of glue there. And I can pick up the glue and there's a little dirty mark here I don't know what that is or where it came from could be from the uh, die cutting process so I'm going to cover that up with one of my blobs I'm starting with the big ones because they're almost like anchor points for where I put the rest and then I'll move down move down the sizes and finish on the little ones some of these die cuts have got quite big white areas in and I can break those up by adding some of these little Wonky drops, wonky circles. And part of me wants to add some gold to these, but I don't think I will. I will add a few white nouveau drops for an extra bit of gloss and interest dimension texture energy all those things that these little finishing touches bring to a project yeah i think keeping it white and purple rather than adding in gold is is what i want for this one so there we are two cards made using the same supplies and techniques but created with different feel i think this one's a bit lighter and brighter and shinier this one's a little bit darker and somberer somberer more somber let me know which one you prefer in the comments mm, i like them both i like the lightness and the gold i love gold and purple together there's something very regal i think about uh purple and gold but i do like the intensity of the color on this and the metallic spatters mm. Right, I think that'll do. Thanks for joining me today. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, all the good stuff. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for Magenta Day. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.